Hey, so uh, welcome back to How To Clinical Research. This is day two of the vlog, and we're looking at a new building today, a new medical office. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring you with me. This one is different than the last one. It's not as nice looking, at least on the outside. The location doesn't seem as prime as the as the other office that that I saw, but the floor plan here looks a little bit more promising. So we'll go check it out together. I'll give you my thoughts and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, so we are starting upstairs. To my left here is a large conference room surrounded by glass walls. Uh, it's a good size and I do like the style of that. Moving past here, we're gonna start going into the office space. So as you can see, the offices here on the right hand side have windows and are fairly large. The offices on the left do not have windows and this office does extend to the left just about as equally as the office that we just saw. This is right here is a closet to house things like the router and phone lines, etc., for the office. As we move down, on the left is a utility closet. And on the right is a larger office where you can hold a desk and couch, as you see here. On the left, we do have a woman's bathroom with a staircase leading to the downstairs. On the left here is a kitchen that I would convert into a lab. And then this is the largest office upstairs. Uh, I would use this as more of a conference room area. And this does have its own private bathroom, which is a little odd for an office space. Okay, so moving downstairs, you will see that there is a bathroom right here. These are the front doors to the left. And this entire area here would serve as a patient waiting room. As we move down here on the left-hand side, we're gonna see some storage space there with an, a patient room uh, with a sink. On the left, here is another patient room with a sink, so essentially complete patient rooms. On the right is a fairly large reception area. And here on the left is another patient room with sink fully complete. On the right is another office with plenty of storage space and a good size. On the left is our last patient room with a sink, and back here is a staircase leading upstairs with some extra workspace. All right, so just to give my final thoughts on this office, they're leasing it either the you know as individual offices, the top floor or the lower floor, or as an altogether unit. The top floor would not work to be leased on its own because. There, it's just administrative offices. There aren't any patient rooms. So to make patient rooms, we'd have to put, put uh, sinks and you know bring in sinks into every single room that we want to be a patient room. Uh, we'd have to make a uh, reception area. It, it would be very uh, cumbersome of a project to do. Now, the downstairs does work. It is obviously geared towards seeing patients. There is a reception area. There are patient rooms. There's an office but there's not enough offices so we'd have to convert one of those patient rooms into an office and there's there's a privacy issue because if they lease the top floor to someone else which of course they will at some point we're gonna have a privacy issue because there's a staircase in the very front and a staircase in the very back that connect the, the top floor to the bottom floor and for patient privacy especially in clinical research that is of the utmost importance so we would have to create some sort of maybe walls divisions to separate the top floor from the bottom floor without blocking any sort of access or entrance in or out of the building for the top tenants. So there's an issue there and there's a lot of work that would need to be done. So I wouldn't recommend getting this office as being our main one, but it is good to see just what's out there. Now there is one idea that could make this work is if let's say we rented the entire office and we subleased with the physician that had his, his or her own private practice in there with us that we would also be working with in clinical research. That's one way to, that's actually kind of a smart way to go about it, I would say, uh, and a bit creative to lower your costs, but also to bring someone in that you're gonna be working with. So that person would help lower your costs and they would help bring you in money as a business owner. So that's one idea for this property, but I don't think we're gonna be going in uh, with this property for this company. That's just an idea for anyone out there that might be looking at buildings. Think outside the box a little bit and think about what you could do to make something work if you're limited in your options. Now, we're gonna keep looking at other properties and uh, I'll be sure to bring you with us. Now, if there's anything that you'd like to see covered, be sure to leave a comment down below and I will do my best to cover that. 
I'm just trying to, again, show you guys the most important parts of finding an office, what to think about, what to look for, and how I'm going to make my decision at the, at the end of the day. So we have a few more to see in the upcoming days. Now, if you're looking for consulting services, uh, be sure to email me right here and I'll be sure to get back to you and we'll figure out what it is that you need and if I can help you. You're seeing right here that I'm able to help build a, a clinical research company from the ground up. That's in terms of even finding the office, doing the negotiations with the landlords and what to look for and everything involved from A to Z. So this is a good, I think, example of my capabilities. So if you are a physician or an entrepreneur and you wanna get into this business, hit me up for consulting. Feel free to shoot me an email and I will get back to you. Anyways, subscribe and stay tuned, guys.